What is communication? It's simply the activity of conveying information. You may ask yourself, how do I convey that information? Communication is broken into three main types of transfer of information. Verbal, nonverbal, written. Let's talk for a moment about verbal communication. <music> verbal communication is one of the ways people convey information face to face, among many other ways. Some of the ways people do this is by making sounds like words, like I'm doing, or by using different languages. At birth, a child has vocal cords and can make sounds, and as it grows, learns how to turn these sounds into words. Don't be confused. Words themselves don't have meaning. It's the person hearing them that puts the meaning in them. The next piece of the communication puzzle is nonverbal. This is best understood as sending and receiving wordless information. These are usually visual messages between people. Some of the ways we communicate non-verbally is by touch, body language, posture, facial expression, and even eye contact. Things like hairstyle, clothing, and objects can communicate something. We can dig a little deeper into nonverbal communication by looking at communication during speech. Some of the nonverbal elements of speech include voice quality, rate, pitch, volume, and even just the way we say things. There's even things like rhythm, intonation, and stress. Although written communication can also have nonverbal communication in it, things like spacing and the way your page is laid out, most nonverbal communication happens face to face. I want to pause for a minute to reflect on the idea of nonverbal communication. In a generation full of emails, texts, and essays, it's no wonder why people have such big misunderstandings. Proper communication involves so much more than just words. People, get off Twitter, get off text, get off Facebook, maybe go to Starbucks and talk to people for a minute. We also communicate via written communication. Think back before phones, people had to handwrite all their messages and mail them to one another. I don't know how I could go a day without emails and my iPhone. One of the biggest issues in written communication is that people miss the key behaviors in it. In order to communicate effectively, you have to use proper grammar, spelling, and punctuation. One has to write ideas in a way that the reader will understand. One has to organize the flow of words logically. One also has to keep the reader in mind to constantly adjust the content for the level of the reader. One also needs to know when written communication is more effective than oral communication. When faced with this final assignment, I looked over the task at hand and had to decide if written communication was the most effective. To me, one of the most effective and modern ways of conveying information is by vlogging. You see, first, a vlog incorporates verbal communication because you're hearing me talk and you're seeing me talk. It also incorporates nonverbal communication because you can see my expressions and my body language. And it incorporates written communication because I'm able to script what I will say and make sure it's coherent. You're also able to repeat what I just said and I'm able to add words to help my presentation. But let's explore a few different ways we communicate to one another. This is simply explained as speaking to a group of people in a structured and deliberate manner. In a way, you're presenting information, usually to inform or to entertain listeners. The purpose behind public speaking can vary from simply having to tell information, having to motivate people, or just to tell a story. The trick with a good public speaker is that they can actually change the listener's emotions, not just inform them. Public speaking can easily relate to interpersonal communication because they're both used to motivate, to help teach leadership, to help teach business. There are also ways of doing mass communication. This form of communication is not usually to a large group of people, but relies on one-on-one -on -one interaction. Interpersonal communication is how we convey ideas, thoughts, and feelings to one another. Interesting though, this type of communication is learned. We can improve our ability by practice, feedback, and reflection. The trick of interpersonal communication is understanding that it consists of sending a message and reception of that message between one or more people. This includes all types of communication, including listening, asserting, 
verbal, even some written. This form of communication relies on communication between a few individuals, where public speaking relies on a large group. Organizational communication is sort of the place between both of these worlds. This breaks down and analyzes communication within an organizational context. Let's dig a little more into communication and see where the common problems lie. The problem with communication isn't the communication itself, but it's the things that actually get in the way of it. When we communicate with someone, we put information we want to tell them into a code that works for us. This may include picking specific words, slangs, even a specific language. This isn't necessarily the problem, but when the person receives the information, the problem happens when they have to decode it. When we communicate something, we encode it with our specific code. The recipient then has to decode this new information. Sometimes decoding it makes the original information incorrect. Encoding and decoding is one of the biggest issues we have in effectively communicating. The next biggest thing that can get in the way of effective communication is noise. Sometimes when we communicate, we inevitably are bombarded with outside noise. Sure, this literally could be a loud noise so you can't hear one another. Though obvious, sometimes there are other things that get in the way. Maybe even you have to go to the bathroom really bad and you can't hold it anymore. Maybe we're stressed out from work and we have a lot of things on our mind. Maybe we stayed up too late working on an assignment and we're just too tired to listen. Whatever the case may be, these noises distract us from effective communication. With all of that said, let's answer the big question. By understanding the channels we use to communicate, by understanding how we communicate with our specific audience, and then by learning how to decrease the noise, we can then unlock a tool to communicate effectively. Communication can help us speak to a large group of people effectively about the truth of scripture. Communication can also help us counsel and mentor one-on-one -on -one and help see real results in people's lives. But most of all, communication can help us build strong and effective relationships and do the one most important thing Christ asked us to do. You see, Jesus commissioned us to go and make disciples. He commissioned us to baptize them. He commissioned us to teach them. I believe by learning how to be effective and creative in communication, we can unlock a tool for doing exactly what Jesus asked us to do. Well, there you have it. Feel free to leave your comments in the box below and tell me how you would answer the question. Have a good one.